Amen! Okay! Magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning to everyone. Once more, nandito naman po tayo sa ating uh, live streaming for our uh, service. Today is uh, April 10, 2020. No po? At uh, alam ko po, marami sa atin na excited na muli. Okay? So I just want uh, to greet once more lahat po ng mga LRCians dito sa Abu Dhabi. Magandang uh, umaga po sa inyo lahat. <coughs> Uh, ganun din sa ating uh, mga uh, LRCians dyan sa Alain at sa Dubai. Again, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Kung nanonood man yung ating uh, LRC Takurong at Dabao, magandang umaga sa inyo. Ah, magandang tanghali sa inyo lahat dyan, by the way. Okay? Sa ating po mga watch, uh, listeners, sa ating mga viewers, I just want to greet you a uh, very, very good morning to everyone. At sa lahat ng mga listeners natin na uh, hindi naman kasama sa LRCians pero po na na-invite today, Magandang umaga po, magandang araw sa inyo lahat. And today, as we uh, as we go uh, to our uh, service, before we start, ang gusto ko lang pong gawin natin right now is yung mag-communion muna po tayo. Ano po? We will do our communion right now. And I know that uh, we have some people ano po, who are watching us right now na maaaring na-invite ka ng iyong kasama sa flat o maaaring bago ka dito sa live streaming. I just want to let you know na uh, pwede tayo mag-communion today uh, with you. Pwede ka namin isama sa communion today. Um, maybe you're wondering how we will do communion online. Uh, and this is very important. We just realized na pwede nga pala tayo mag-communion. Why, why don't we do it every Friday before the service? So right now, I'm expecting na meron kayong mga hawak na piece ng bread at uh, small cup ng juice na po para po tayo uh, makapag-start. Now, for the benefits of those people na bago, na po, what a benefit of those people na, narili, na nakikinig right now, na nanonood sa atin right now, na maaaring bago ka on this thing, uh, maaari kang magtanong, maaari kang uh, magkaroon ng question in your mind, uh, uh, ito bang communion is bakit ganito gagawin? Na maaaring uh, iba sa pananaw mo kung ano it, itong communion na to. But I would like to tell you na hindi po importante kung papano gagawin. Amen? Ang importante po is bakit natin ginagawa ang communion. Amen? Because as we know na tayo po, uh, we, uh, uh, we grow up to that uh, belief, to that uh, church na po na tayo po is nag-church, nagsisimba, pero po nagko-communion tayo. Pero po what I'm trying to say is hindi naman natin alam talaga kung bakit tayo nagko-communion. Tama? Pero right now, before we do this communion, for the benefits of those people who are new to this, I just want to share to you quickly kung bakit ba kailangan mag-communion at bakit tayo nagko-communion. Okay? So for the sake of, of, of those uh, of you who don't understand yet na po, why we need to, uh, to do communion or the Lord's Supper, first thing foremost, I would like to tell you na meron po tayong four acts. Na po? Ayan po sa si screen that you will see. There are four acts that we need to do first before we take this last supper. Na po? Meron po tayong four acts. At the number one acts natin is remembrance. Na po? Yun po yung sabi dyan, remembrance. Remembrance po ang, ang, ang first thing natin gagawin. And today, when you pick up a piece of bread and a cup of juice, it is supposed to remind of Jesus Christ. This bread is to remind us of His body and how His body was broken on the cross. Tandaan po natin that the Lord Jesus Christ was without sin. Wala po siya kasalanan. But He took our place on the cross to redeem us and pay for the penalty of our sins. In other words, sa alip na tayo, pinako, siya po yung napako. At tuwing nagko-communion tayo, ito po yung ating binabalikan. We should remember that. Okay? We should remember that. At ito po yung sabi ni Peter, no po, si Apostle Peter, sabi niya po, He personally carried our sins in His body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Ay kaya nga po remembrance, ang first act is because when we eat the bread, it reminds us of the body of Christ. No po, yung kanyang katawan. No po, yung, uh, yung uh, brutal crushing ng katawan ni Lord Jesus Christ. Most especially the nails that were driven into His hands and to His feet. No po? So kapag ikaw is, uh, sinubo mo yung bread, at uh, by the way, uh, pwede nyo pong nguyuin yan. Hindi lang po tinutunaw sa bibig. Okay? Okay? Eh, pwede nyo pong nguyain yung bread. Wala pong problema ron. Amen? So, kapag ginuya po natin yung bread, yung, yung, yung crush niya, yung po, it reminds us of the body of Christ. Yung pong katawan niya, yung po, na pinahirapan yung pong katawan niya na, na nasaktan, yung po, in return, in exchange of, uh, of His righteousness to us. Yung po. Okay, so, sabi po sa Hebrews, sabi po sabi sa Hebrews, 
For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So the cup, the cup of juice, the nasa kamay mo right now, remind us of the blood of Jesus Christ. Ito po yung blood na nag-save sa atin. Yung kanyang dugo na nabuhos doon sa cross, ito po yung nagbigay ng kaligtasan sa ating lahat. The poured, the, the poured from the body of Christ, and it was being broken, tandaan niyo po that the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of our sin. This blood redeem us from the penalty of our sin. Po, tinubos po lahat ng ating kasalanan. At kaya po tayo nagko-communion, na meron po tayong juice na iinumin mamaya, it reminds us, it reminds us na yung blood of Jesus, without the blood of Jesus, na po, uh, there is no remission of our sins. Hindi po tayo mariridim. Okay? So the second act is examination. At ano yung ating i-examine? Na po? Apostle Paul writes, Every oath, na po, sabi rin ito, every oath, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. When we set aside a time to share in the Lord's Supper, we are not just fulfilling a, bro- a ritual of the church. This time today is set aside for reflection, yung mong self-examination. Uh, kailangan po tayo manalangin muna, humingi tayo ng forgiveness to our God para bago po tayo mag-take ng communion. Kaya po, meron tayong uh, examination muna, okay? Si Paul po, ano po yung sabi ni Paul? Sabi niya, so then whoever eats the bread, okay, whoever eats the bread, sabi niya, ano po? or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So we must understand that in reality, none of us is worthy to take this communion. Kaya po, importante na tayo po mag-examine muna na sa sarili. We need to pray first, ask for forgiveness before we do this communion. Ito po yung ating second act. Now, the third act, let's go to our third act, is participation. Meaning, in 1 Corinthians po, sa verse, uh, sa verse 10, sabi po ganito, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 16-17. It's not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks of participation in the blood of Christ. And it's not the bread that was break a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all share the one loaf. Alam niyo po, the Lord's Supper, kahit na bago ka pa lang, kahit na ikaw is uh, ngayon pa lang uh, dito sa mga ganitong gawain, po, pwede kaya namin maisama dito po sa sinasabi nating Lord's Supper o yung communion. Alam niyo po, ito pong elements na hawak niyo ngayon. No po? We look at these elements before us and we see the bread and we see the cup. But it is more than that. These elements represent the fact that through the sacrifice on Calvary, we are able to include it in the new family of God. Kasama ka sa pamilya ng Diyos. Kaya, pwede kang mag-take ng communion kahit ikaw is bago pa lang. Okay? So, we expecting na meron kang hawak ng Diyos and meron kang bread right now. So, the last one, number four, is proclamation. Po? Ano pong ating ipinoproclaim? Ang sabi po ni Paul, for whatever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Until it comes. So participating in communion today is also an act of proclamation. What is to be proclaimed? You are proclaiming or we are telling the truest message ever told. You po yung gospel. The gospel is the good news to all mankind. That, be, that because Jesus sacrificed his blood and his body, we can all be delivered from sin and shame. Lahat po tayo nagkaroon ng kaligtasan. Na po. So kaya po yung salita ng Diyos, as we do our communion right now, we are declaring to everyone the good news. Ito po yung gospel na celebration. Amen po ba? So malino po ba sa atin, mga first timers, at sa ating lahat na refresh right now, kung bakit tayo nagko-communion? Sige po, I invite everyone right now to hold that piece of bread in your hand. Yung piece of bread na meron ka right now, I want you to hold it in your hand and the cup in the other side of your hand. And let's bow down our head and close our eyes right now. Father in heaven, we proclaim your word today. We proclaim your good news. We proclaim your goodness, your faithfulness to each and every one of us right now. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ who died on the cross. 
to redeem us, to pay for the penalty of our sins. So today, as we do this communion, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Patawarin niyo kami, Panginoon, minsan pa, Lord, sa lahat ng aming mga pagkakasala, sa mga bagay po na aming nagawa, na hindi po naaayon sa inyong kugustuhan, o na hindi naaayon sa inyong salita. So right now, this very moment, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us to all our iniquities and make us worthy to take this element in front of us. For I receive from the Lord, but I also pass on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take your bread in your head right now. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You can take this right now. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for us. Lord Jesus, we want to recognize everything that you have done. And we're so thankful, Lord God, that you did it for us. Thank you, poor Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone will say, Amen. We have this our uh, uh, usual uh, Bible declaration. So, hawak niyo po yung Bible niyo. I hope na hawak niyo. So, let's do our uh, Bible declaration right now. Lahat po tayo, magkaroon po muna tayo ng Bible declaration. This is very important po because uh, uh, this is declaring the Lord's goodness in your life when you have this Bible. Para po sa aming mga first timer, no? Sa mga first viewers namin for this morning, okay? So let's declare it. And sabi po dito, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. This morning, I boldly confess, my mind is alert. My mind is receptive. I am excited because I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. And I will never be the same, never, never be the same. When I come out in this place, in Jesus' name, I confess. Amen and amen and amen. Sige nga po sa inyo yung mga tahanan, palakpakan nga po natin ng Panginoon. Yung malakas sa palakpak po para kay Lord. Yan. Alright. Okay. Okay. So, good morning po again na po, sa lahat ng ating mga leaders, listeners and viewers. Uh, today po, I just want to uh, ask everyone, na po, before we start the message, uh, and letting you know, na po, many people po, maraming tao, na po, maraming tao, has been asking a question. In fact, in the last two weeks po, may mga tao po nag-PPM sa akin, may mga tao po nagtatanong, na po, bumubulong, na po. At tinatanong nila sa akin, bakit daw po itong mga bagay na nangyayari ngayon, ito pong uh, pandemic na po na nangyayari right now, is bakit daw po inaalaw ng Diyos? Meron po mga tanong na ganyan, na po. At meron po yung mga tanong, ito po yung mas maraming tanong, ito po yung uh, best, uh, more, uh, most, uh, Uh, questions na nareceive ko. Po. Ang sabi po nila, ito raw bang uh, pandemic virus, ito raw bang coronavirus, is a sign na ng end time. Okay? Alam niyo po, meron din akong nareceive na ganyan tanong, no po, sa LRC uh, 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 Takurong, no po, LRC Takurong ba siya? Opo, meron pong nag-PM sa akin na ganyan, and then Dabo yata, opo, may nag-PM po sa akin, saka sa ibang church, no po, nakilala, nakilala natin yung mga attendee nila, nagtanong po sila, sabi nila, Pastor, do you think that this pandemic that is happening right now is the sign of the end times? Ayan, yan po yung mga tanong nila. At alam niyo po, that many people has been asking me a question, yung po mga taong yun. Uh, ang tanong ko nga nga is, could God be using the coronavirus? Tingin niyo ba? Could God be using the coronavirus as some sort of sign or play to indicate that we are living in the end times? Tama? Meron nga bang pagkakataon na gano'n? 
So, may mga ilang nga pong kapatiran yung nagtatanong at hindi lang sila basta nagtatanong eh. Nararamdaman mo na meron silang fear. No po? Meron silang spirit of fear no po, sa mga nangyayari right now. Na kung ito nga bang nangyayari, is sign na ng end times. And because of that, the Lord is giving us a very interesting and very practical message today that will definitely answer the question. At kung meron ka mang speculations, at kung ikaw man is first time viewers dito, I just want you to take notes of this. Kung meron ka mang pen, kung meron ka mang paper right now, at I advise na mag-take note po tayo kasi po napaka-importante po ng pag-uusapan natin. Ang tanong, ito nga bang nangyayari these days around the world? Is science na ng end time? Okay? So, I know that you have questions in your mind. Meron kong tanong, merong tanong yung katabi mo. Dabo? So, today, I encourage you to take note. Kasi po, napakaganda po ito yung binigay sa atin ni Lord. Because we are so blessed, dabo? today, that the Lord has given us a chance to explore His Word. Ipaliwanag sa mga tao. Uh, and definitely, it will answer your questions in your mind. Kung ikaw may nagtanong sa akin, ikaw may yung nanonood right now na nag-PM sa akin, this is for you. This is the message for you. And for everyone, this is added information for us according to what going on right now in this in this world. Diba? So, ang tanong, ito nga bang coronavirus pandemic is sign na that we are living in the end times? How many of you are excited? Okay? So as today, we would like to discuss with you, ito po yung title ng ating pag-uusapan. Ito po yung title ng ating pag-uusapan. Ang sabi ko po rito, is this coronavirus pandemic a sign that we are now in the last days? Amen? Alam niyo po bakit ito yung topic na, 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 na pinili ko right now, na nilid sa akin ni Lord? Kasi po, as I said, in the last two weeks, meron po mga tanong, meron po agam-agam, meron fear ang mga tao. Po? So today, meron lang tayong ipopokusa na sets of verses na kung saan tayo didiin at para mapatunayan natin na ito nga bang nangyayari is signs na ng end times? End times. Because alam niyo po, this is the first time, as I said one day, na this is the first time na nangyari po, at least in 50 years, I'm 52 years old now, since I was born, this is the first time na nangyari na Ang buong mundo po na experience natin, ang buong mundo po is affected. Ang buong mundo po is uh, 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 nagkakaisa in prayer. Na po. Ang buong mundo is dumaranas. Hindi lang Pilipinas, hindi lang UAE, but buong mundo. So, itong tanong na ito, sasagutin natin right now. Okay? So, ito pa ang talagang henerasyon natin, ang makaka-witness ng katapusan na ng mundo. Diba? Ito pa talaga yung generation natin. So these questions has given me the opportunity to read and meditate a set of passages na ito po yung isi-share ko sa inyo ngayon. As a matter of fact, Jesus' disciples has a similar question in Matthew 24. They were asking Jesus, Lord, what are the signs that we need to look for that will indicate that you are going to coming back? Sabi niya ngayon. Ito yung tanong ng mga disciples. And so Jesus responded to them. Sumagod po ang Panginoon. And says that these are the signs that you need to look for. Okay? So right now, bago natin sagutin, are we living in the end times? Titignan natin yung signs that we need to look for. Kailangan meron kang mga signs. Kailangan meron pahiwatig ang salita ng Diyos sa iyo, ang Diyos mismo, according to His word, ito na nga ba yung end times? And this is the topic na gusto ko i-share sa inyo ngayon. Okay? Alright, so let's let's read first the sets of verses na meron po tayo. Okay? Ito po yung sabi. Ito po yung sabi ni Lord nung nagtanong ang kanyang mga disciples sa kanya. Okay? So ang sabi niya po, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. And sabi rito, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, listen to this carefully, everyone. Lahat po tayo focus. Makinig po tayo. At this moment, gusto ko muna mag-pause tayo doon sa salitang 
pestilence. No po? Pag sinabi pestilences, pag sinabi pong pestilences, ito po ay apan, depending ito sa version ng Bible na binabasa mo. Dito po sa Bible na binasa ko, very readable ang salitang pestilences. You may or you may not have that word doon sa Bible na hawak mo. So, depende sa version. Baka salitang yan, hindi mo makita, but of course, in our case, ang ginamit nating translation is yung NKJB o yung New King's James, New King James Version. Now, makinig po tayo. This exact word, pestilences, it is this word that makes a lot of people question whether the coronavirus is some sort of pestilence. Na po? And that word simply means plague. Ang ibig sabihin po niya is plague. When you say pestilence, that is plague. And that is indicating that Jesus very well might be returning very quickly. Na po? Dahil dyan. Dahil ikinokombert nila yan sa mga nangyayari right now sa mundo. But, in order, again, to answer that question, let's keep it reading. Na po? At sabi po sa Mark, Matthew 24.8, But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Ayan. Alright. Okay. Now, listen to this. Ito po yung tinanong ko kagabi sa mga kababaihan dito sa center. No po? Kung ikaw ay isang babae na nanonood right now, okay, let's squeeze the word of God right now. Kung ikaw ay isang babae na nanonood right now at isa kang pregnant na babae na malapit ng mga anak, You know to yourself that if you go to a hospital and get admitted because you are getting birth pains, mayroon dalawang bagay na tinitignan ng mga doktor at nurse sa iyo. Okay? Pag dumating ka sa ospital, buntis ka, at sinasabi mong masakit na ang tiyan mo, mayroon dalawang bagay na tinitignan ng doktor. Number one is whether the pain or the contraction being experienced is frequently. Okay? Di ba yung puwing tanong? Tatanungin ka ng doktor, yung bang nararamdaman mo is frequent, di ba? Then they will also check if there is increase in the intensity. Di po? In other words, ito bang contractions na nararamdaman ng babaeng buntis is on a consistent basis or if the pain of these contractions are actually increasing as well? Are you following me? Now, as I believe that Jesus is trying to say the same thing, ito po yung sinabi ko rito. A sign that we're approaching the end times is where there is an increase in frequency and intensity of global issues. Ayan po yung ibig sabihin. And this is the key principle. In other words, Jesus is saying that there has always been a war. Naranasan ng mga tao yan. That there is always rumors of war. Maraming kwento ng war in all parts of the world. There has always been earthquake and famines. Naranasan ng mundo yan sa iba't ibang places. And plagues and all sorts of things that is happening. Lahat yan pinagdaanan natin. But you will know that the end is near when you see these things happening with more frequency and also with greater intensity. Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you, are you getting my point right now, this morning? Kapag ito is meron nang nangyayaring malime at meron greater intensity, that is one sign. Okay? That is one sign. Amen po ba? Are you with me? Now, with that being said, with that being said, here are seven signs. Bibigyan ko kayo ng seven signs and I want you to take note of this. I want you to write down everything na makikita nyo at marinunig nyo from me. Because this is pitong sign na magbibigay sa atin ng sagot sa mga tanong ninyo, sa mga nagtatanong na ito bang plagues na nangyayari, na ito bang coronavirus, is talagang sign na ng end time. Okay? So right now, I have seven signs that Jesus gives us that we need to look out for that will indicate that we are believing in the end times. Amen? Are you with me? Are you ready with your pen and your uh, notes right now? So, let's go to number one. Ang sabi ko po sa number one, there will be Christian persecution. Okay? Yung mga Christiano, yung mga believer, na persecute na. Okay? At ang sabi po sa Matthew 24.9, verse 9, ito po yung sabi, Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. 
Young Prince Abe, I love you, Paul. In these days, we are indeed seeing an increase in this Christian persecution. In certain parts of the world, our religious freedom are taken away that if you proclaim the name of Christ in certain areas of this world, as you will see in our screen, you will be killed. Ganyan po yung You will be persecuted. You will be murdered for your faith. And Jesus said, this is one of the signs that you need to look out for. Ito yung isang mga bagay na according to scriptures, according to the word of God, ito yung mga bagay na dapat nating makita. In terms of once again, remember, ah, remember, wag nyo kanilin mo tayo sinabi kanina, yung frequency at saka yung intensity should be there. So kung tayo man is nakita na ng mga persecution ng mga Christian, kung meron ng intensity at meron ng frequency, ibig sabihin, kahit saan lugar, kahit saan lugar, pag nalabang Christian, papatayin ka. Okay? Even in this place, kahit saan lugar, Pag nalaman nilang Kristiyano, papatayin ka na. Why? Because there is frequency and intensity. You remember that? This, this is the signs. Okay, now, those are one sign that will let you know that the end is near. Kapag mayroon ng frequency na nangyayaring ganyan, maaaring hindi ito nangyayari in the place where you are. But it is near because we are seeing happening. Amen? Now, the second sign that Jesus says, we need to look out for is not only Christian persecution, number two is Christian opposition. Ayan. Ito bang Christian opposition is nag increase na? Tama? nag increase na ba yan? Amen. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Tignan mo yung katabi mo right now. Dati nga, opposition sa iyo yan eh. Di ba? Ikaw mismo dati, opposition ka eh. Tama? Ako mismo, myself, dati opposition ako sa mga believer. Dati pinagtatawa lang ko sila. Dati sabi ko, mga baliw yan, di ba? Mga baliw yan, mga yan, yung mga born again question na yan. Isa ako sa mga opposition. But see, what Jesus says in part B of the same verse, natingan natin kanina. Ito po yung sabi sa Matthew 24, 9b. Sabi dyan, You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. Tama? So, Christian persecution, napakalinaw po. Meron mga Christian persecution. And these days, we are seeing an increase as to this as we speak. You know po? Right now, kahit na mga nangyayari ngayon, hindi nyo ba napansin yung mga nangyayari ngayon, di ba? Magsishare ka ng gospel, magsishare ka ng salita ng Diyos, pero merong mga oppositions. Tama? Hindi sila naniniwala. They don't believe. Ang dami mo nga ini-invite eh, ayaw mo sumama sa iyo eh. Tama? Ayaw nila sumama sa'yo. They don't believe what the Word of God was saying. Ayaw nila sumama. Kahit nakulitin mo sila, minsan nga, paalisin ka pa sa bahay eh. Sa tinitirhan mo, di ba? Minsan nga, paalisin ka pa dito sa case natin, dito sa flat, na po, dito sa UAE. Minsan yung may-ari ng bahay eh, dahil naiingayan sa worship. Dahil may mga taong pupunta dyan para mag-Bible study. Minsan nga, paalisin ka sa bahay. Dahil ang gulo raw, ang ingay daw. Tama? Tama? So ito po yung mga persecution na ating uh, nararamdaman, nararanasan. Ang daming nagagalit sa iyo dahil follower ka ni Lord. Why? Because of what we believe as a Christian and the truth that we stand for. That biblical truth that sets us free that goes against worldly relative truth. Kaya po marami ang mga Christian opposition. And because of the truth, look at our screen. We hated we are hated by these people. Ito po yung mga example ng mga Christian opposition. Ano po? Alam niyo po, gusto ko sabihin sa inyo, don't be offended sa mga watcher namin. Gusto ko po nga sabihin sa inyo, paliwanag, ano po? we don't hate you, but God hates him. God loves you, but God hates him. Ano po? Ito yung mga uh, nag-oppose nag sa ating ginagawa because they don't want to be told of what they can and cannot do. Ulitin ko ulit. They're opposing us. They're opposing with what we believe. They're opposing God. They're opposing all the power of Christ. Because they don't want to be told of what they can and cannot do. Yun na po yung rason. They don't want to be told that they're a bad person. They don't want to be told that they're a sinner. Everything that we stand for in terms of what is written in the Bible, we go against to what naturally people wants to do. 
baliktad eh. No po? Yung gusto nilang gawin, ayaw nating gawin. Yung gusto nilang pairalin sa buhay nila, ayaw nating gawin. Yun po yung pagkakaiba. So, the, so this is one thing why they oppose us. So marami po yung Christian uh, uh, opposition. Alam niyo po, uh, hindi ko na sinabi yung video rito. Pero po kung titignan nyo sa YouTube, napakarami po nga mga uh, 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 Americans or Europeans na they are sharing the word of God very boldly sa kanya po sa street. At meron pa silang microphone, meron silang speaker, at yung mga tao, pinapersecute sila, yung mga tao na sa paligid nila. Pero, praise God, kasi itong mga tao to grabe po. When they speak the word of God, kahit na nakapaligid yung mga, yung mga tao na pinagtatawanan sila, pero dire-diretso sila nagsasalita. Na po? So, we can see that there is some increase na po, pagdating dito. By the way, by the way, na po, before I forget, na po, ito po sinishare ko sa inyo, ito po yung number two. Meron po ako seven signs. Pero po, ang sinishare ko sa inyo right now is yung from sa pinakamagaang papunta sa seven na dapat subos na be number one. Okay? So nakikita natin to. Don't forget the word frequency and intensity. Okay? So kumbaga, binaligtad ko to. So nandito pa lang tayo sa number uh, six. Na po? Kasi ito pa lang. Kasi po, binaligtad ko yung seven signs. Inuna ko yung pinakamagaang pababa sa pinakamabigat. Okay? So, and as a result, no po, as a result of yung mga tao na na, 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 na nag-o-oppose sa ginagawa natin, sa ating belief, because people usually don't want to be corrected. This is it. Yun lang ang pinaka, yun lang ang pinaka main reason why they oppose us. Bakit maraming Christian opposition? Because they don't want to be corrected. Ayaw nilang baguhin yung buhay na meron sila. We Christians are facing oppositions almost like never before. Kung titignan ninyo. Tama? Ma why? Bakit ko nasabi yun? Because we have the compassion to share the word of God now. Napakarami pong tao na nagsishare na ng gospel ngayon. Napakarami pong tao. Hindi, hindi, hindi kagaya dati. Na, na kaunti lang, may kita mo. At kaya increasing is because dumadami na ang nagsishare ng katotohanan. Amen? So, at, 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 at the same time, marami rin mga Christian, ang, nag uh, marami rin mga non-believer ang nag o sa atin. Kasi dumadami na yun, nag-share. So dumadami rin sila nag o sa atin. Amen? Are you following me? Napo, naintindihan niyo po ba yung sinasabi ko? So that is number two, Christian opposition. Now, let's go to the third thing that Jesus says we need to look out for in terms of sign of His return that are drawing near. Ito po yung mga signs na tinitingnan natin. Let's go to number three. And number three po natin is apostasy. Meaning, in other words, people are living the faith. Na po? Marami na nga bang mga tao ang umaalis sa faith? Marami na nga ba? Alam niyo po, uh, again, with the help of those people na nakatira dito sa center, na po, nag-search po ako ng mga well-known na tao, no? mga well-known na tao, para patunayan itong apostasy na ating pinag-uusapan right now. Ang sabi po rito sa susunod na verse, sa Matthew 24.10, ito po yung sabi, And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Ito po yung sabi ng verse. Now, I want you to notice here, that Jesus doesn't say that they will lose their salvation. Okay? Hindi sinabi rito yun, ha? Okay? Don't make me wrong. Walang sinabi ang Panginoon dito. Ang sabi niya lang, many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Okay? So, hindi natin i-discuss yung topic ng salvation dito. But according to what Jesus says, what He meant is we will see an increase in frequency and intensity, remember that bait, bird pains, of people turning away from their faith. Amen? Ito po yung mga taong nag-backslide at umalis na totally sa Christianity. And we are seeing this. The, the, this is happening. This is nangyayari itong mga bagay na to. We have seen people that grows up in a Christian home. Mga ipinanak ng Kristiyano. And in one point, they're saying they believe in Jesus Christ. Ito pa yung mga taong to. But now, they are turning away from the faith. They're turning away from Christ. They're turning away from the things that they have learned as a child. And I will give you some of the most well-known Christian personality na nanaan doon na na wala pa. How many of you knows Joshua Harris? Okay, how many of you knows him? Amen na lang ng amen para mabilis. Okay? 
So, ito pong si Joshua Harris is the lead pastor of Covenant Life Church. Imagine, pastor na po to. And in 2019, Harris announced a separation from his wife, Shannon. He announced it last, uh, last year only, 2019. And just recently, the former pastor of Covenant Life Church has announced his full support for the LGBTQ community. Bumitaw po siya totally. Imaginin mo, isa itong pastor na, nagpapastor na ng church to. Di ba? At alam niyo po ba, if you will just search his name, search his name, hindi ko na lang po sinama rito. If you will just search who is Joshua Harris, marami siyang isinulat na mga book against dito sa mga tao, sa mga LGBT. Tungkol sa mga relationship. Ang dami niyang isinulat. All the, those book, books are in Christian side. Pero po, nung, nung siya po'y bumitaw, as a pastor, nung siya po'y buba sa posisyon, grabe, ang sabi niya, lahat daw ng mga sinulat niya, is hindi totoo. Amen? Samantalang, ang dami pong bumili ng book na yon, ang dami pong na-bless na po sa mga book na isinulat niya. While there is something na nangyari na suddenly, leaving the faith. Ito po'y sinasabi ng Panginoon, na po? So, meron pa po ang isang tao rito, and everybody knows this. Do you know Marty Samson? He is the lead singer and songwriter of Hillsong. Hillsong Worship is known for their beautiful lyrics sa lahat ng kanta nila. In fact, in 2002, when myself and Pastor Grace has attended the church for the very first time, na-bless po ako sa kanta ng Hillsong na I Simply Live. Na po? Yung po yung nagbigay sa amin ng pagkakataon na bumalik sa church. Na po yung kanta ng Hillsong na I Simply Live. And speaking about this guy, this, this specific guy, Marty Samson, he wrote so many, uh, so many songs na po, for Hill songs. At kaya po nagpatuloy, ang, uh, kaya po tayo nagpatuloy, by the way, because of sa mga kanta nila, kasi po ng 2002, yan pa lang yung mga uh, sikat na, for us, mga sikat na mga kanta nung those days. Po. Anyways, Marty Samson was originally from Sydney. He first started leading worship with Hillsong in the late 1990s. And some of his best composed songs are, alam ko, alam niyo to, Take, Take All of Me, Now You're Near, For All You've Done, Mighty to Save, All I Need Is You, God Is Great, You Are My Word, and the song that one time uh, I sang in the church, yung pong Carry Me. Siya po lahat ang kumanta nun, at siya po lahat ang nagsulat nun. Imagine a person with such great talent, na po? with such great talent, na itong taong ito is napaka-talented, na itong taong ito is naandoon na sa peak ng kanyang pagka-Kristyano, pagkatapos biglang nawala. Alam mo yun, yung biglang bumitaw sa pananampalataya. And for some, of, for some of you who knows those songs, ang mga sinabi ko kanina, grabe po yung talent talaga nitong taong ito. No? Hindi lahat ng tao may talent na ganyan. At talaga naman pong pagbidasa mo yung mga lyrics ng songs na kanya'y sinulat, you will see that there is, there, uh, there is anointing to how he composed a song. And besides that, he has the voice to sing it. No po? At ano pa siya? Gitarista pa siya. No po? So may kita mo lang doon sa mga lyrics yun. But suddenly, something has happened na ikinagulat talaga ng lahat. Sadly, this post of Martin Samson's, ang sabi rito, come just a few days after Pastor Joshua Harris announced over Facebook that he doesn't currently consider himself as a Christian. Magkasunod lang sila. Araw lang ang binilang. Nung bumitaw to si, Harry, si Joshua Harris, bumitaw na rin siya. Di ba? Ito po yung sinasabi ng verse kanina ni, ni Jesus mismo na pagdating ng time, maraming mga tao ang aalis sa faith. Marami pong mga tao ang tatalikod sa kanya. Di ba nakakalungkot na such talented people na ginagamit ng Panginoon, no? Na, na, na supposed to be makakarating sa sa, 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 sa sa eternal life, pero bumitaw? Amen? Huwag niyo pong kalilimutan, ilagi ko sinasabi. Christianity, look at me, Christianity is not about how you started it, but it's all about how you will finish this race. Tama? Ito po yung pinag-uusapan natin, okay? So, sobrang dami. But there is one more person na gusto kong i-share today. Meron pa po isa. One prominent Christian person, okay? So, sino yon? 
You know, everybody knows Kathy Hudson. Kathy Hudson, when she was still a worship singer in a Christian church, when her parents were both the pastors, ito po yung pangalan niya, Kathy Hudson. And imagine, she left her faith at itong taong ito, PK to. PK means pastor kids to. No po? Ito po nang pinanganak para po sa Christina to. Nung pinanganak siya po is born again Christian na. Both her parents, father and mother, are both pastors. Imagine, imagine niyo po to. Then what happened later? Let the faith become nawala siya ang bumalik Katy Perry na siya. Di po? Kung nanonood po kayo ng contest na po, ng singing, ano yun? Anong, ano yung singing na American contest Idol. na siya? Ano? American Idol, yes. American Idol. She is one of the uh, uh, judge na po doon sa American Idol. So from a worship singer, made the switch to mainstream pop music singer. Like the others, at some point, she was champion for Christ. Amen? Champion po for Christ to. But now, turning away from the faith. Di ba po nakakalungkot? And Jesus says, you need to look for that. Kailangan tingnan natin yan. Because as He return, draws nearer, tingnan natin yung intensity, tingnan natin yung frequency ng mga tao, mga kilalang tao, kahit hindi kilala, na biglang tumalikod kay Jesus. Biglang tumalikod sa Panginoon. This is the things that we need to look for. Kung talaga ba ang tanong natin is, ito bang nangyayaring coronavirus na ito, pastor? Ito bang pandemic na ito? Is sign na talaga ng end times? No po? This is the things that I'm trying to share to you, ang mga titing na natin. And this is according to what Jesus says. Imagine this Matthew 24, 10, and many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Okay? So always be reminded, again, ulitin ko po sa mga listeners and viewers natin, Christianity is not how you accepted the Lord and how you started. Ang Christianity po is how you will finish this race. Hanggang sa muli siya bumalik, lalo na sa mga pagkakataong ito na may mga ganito pangyayari. Amen? So number four, you will see many ways, in many ways in our culture today, that is there going to be an increase, no po, in false prophets. Ayan. Ayan po yung mga false prophets na yan. Nagkakaroon ng maraming increase right now yan. Na pag sabi ng false prophets, saan tayo kukuha ng batayan? Ito po yung sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 24.11. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Ayan. Yan po yung sabi ng Panginoon. Once again, in our culture on this generation, we are seeing... So many people, whether in television or in the news or even in social media, at ang nakakatakot na to, sometimes nasa loob na ng church, in different churches itself, they, will, they claim that they are prophets, taking the title of prophets, and they are deceiving hundreds, thousands, millions of people by telling them something that God has never said. Okay? Makinig po kayo, bakit mga Paul prophets to? Because they're telling something that God has never said. By promising them things that God has never promised. Marami pong ganyan nangyayari ngayon at hindi po natin, nabapa, hindi natin namamalayan na meron na mga ganyan. At hindi lang yan. We see the rise of certain organization. No po? Nag-search po ako sa Google uh, at uh, ipapakita ko sa inyo. They're, uh, the rise of certain organization, napakarami po nila at nagkalat sila sa social media in this different part of the world. And one of them is the new apostolic generation. Alam niyo po itong mga itong grupong to? When you will see them, when you will watch them, the po, they're, they're, they're talking the word of God. They, they talk the word of God. The po, itong mga to. At saka mayroon pa isa, yung pong the world faith movement. Yan po mga yan. And listen to this. This group or this movement are so popular. Be, why? Because the way they talk and the way they preach were so powerful. The po? Very powerful mga preacher po to. But how did I say that they are false prophets? Kasi po, kapag nagtuturo sila, nilalaso nila ang mga isipan ng mga tao. How? Paano ko po nasabi? Because they are telling people what is only good in their ears. Amen? Nagtuturo sila sa pulpito at sinasabi lang nila yung mga bagay na masarap. Pakinggan. Amen po ba? You with me? Hindi sila nagsasalita ng pangito again sa ginagawa ng tao. At lahat is yun, maganda lang sa kanilang pandinig. Walang open rebuke. 
walang open review and they are using the grace of God so much alam niyo po yung grace of God kasi po ang mga tao parang okay lang magkamali di ba? okay lang because why? because naririnig nila to sa mga nagtuturo bakit okay lang? dahil si Lord naman is full of grace tama ba? mali pong katuruan yun hindi po natin pwedeng gamitin ang grace ni Lord just to, to to encourage people and to make sure that they will come back in the church dahil ang gusto lang marinig nila yung grace ng Lord na kahit meron silang ginagawang mali okay lang kasi andyan naman ang grace ni Lord and because of these things they are leading people astray Amen? are you following me? and Jesus said these are the things you will need to look for that will indicate that this return is getting closer. Ito po yung mga bagay na titingnan natin that this return is getting closer. Okay? But now, but not only that. Okay? Hindi lang yung mga bagay na yun. Because the fifth thing that Jesus said we need to look for in terms of the signs of His coming is that there is going to be an extreme immoral decay or increase in wickedness. Ayan. There will be an increase in wickedness. <clears throat> so, ano po ibig sabihin niya? Yung increase in wickedness, ang ibig sabihin niya, maraming tao, okay, ang hindi lang nawawala sa faith. Ngunit maraming tao ang sumasama. Okay? Nawawala yung love. Nawawala yung respeto sa mga kapwa nila tao. Okay? Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, kung nakikinig ka ngayon, sabihin mo, hindi ako yun. Sabi mo ha, hindi ako, ha? hindi ako yon, okay? Now see, see what Jesus says. Ito po yung gusto kong tingnan natin. Sabi po ni Lord, sabi po sa Matthew 24 verse 12, Sin will be rampant everywhere. Amen? And the love of many will grow cold. Ayan, yan po yung sabi ni Lord. So Jesus said, whenever you start to see the world around you, experience an extreme moral decay, then you will know that the end is very near. Yan po sabi ni Lord. And this is very visible around us. Tama mo ba? We are seeing this happening sa paligid natin. Let me give you an example. Ito po yung example. Ayan, 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 ayan. We are seeing an increase and a record setting in terms of the number of abortion that we can see around the world. And in this picture, they're, 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 they're pushing the government to make abortion legal. And people, especially the women, are fighting for it to be legal. They want to legalize the killing of babies. Well, God doesn't need this. God doesn't want this to happen. Isa po ito, marami pa pong, uh, marami pa pong signs, marami pa tayo nakikita, but I just want to use this one because there was an increase on this. There is a frequency on this. And again, I just want to show you this. Also, we are we are seeing our society trying to push this agenda of same-sex marriages. Na po? And they are trying to normalize homosexuality. So that your kids and my kids one day will grow up thinking na itong same-sex marriage ay okay lang. Tama ba? Gusto nila illegalize to. Some sort of normal things that just anybody can do. Tama ba? Na pagdating ng future, lahat pwede na. Then, tandaan niyo po, we're also starting to see an increase even in the Christian culture of divorces at a higher rate than never before. Why? Because Jesus predicted all of this. And He said, in the end time, people's love in one another will be grow cold. Yan po yung sinasabi dyan. Manlalamig ang bawat isa. Amen? Grabe, sobrang ganda ng kasal. Alam niyo po yung mga, mga well-known na tao, sobrang ganda ng kasal, sobrang ganda ng preparation, naka ano pa yan, naka televised pa yan, or in the social media, makikita mo why, because they are well-known personalities. Pagkatapos, one year lang, divorce na. Sayang yung ginastos. Po. So, dumadami po yung ganyan natin nakikita, most especially, sometimes, sa mga celebrities, sa mga well-known person. Po. So, tinan po natin na sabi ni Paul. Kasi po si Paul, Si Paul po kasi also predicts and explains not only the love to one another is growing to cold, the grow cold. Tignan po yung sabi dito ni, ni Paul. Okay? Ito po yung sabi. You should know this, Timothy. Ito yung sabi niya kay Timothy. That in the last days, there will be very difficult times. 
for people will have only themselves and their money. Yeah? Yan lang ang gusto nila. Now listen to this. Ito po yung sabi ni Paul. Tayo daw sa last days, may kita natin mga taong ang minamahal lang ay ang kanilang mga sarili at kanilang pera. Yung hindi sila lumalaban ng parehas. It's all about me. It's all about my son. It's all about my work. It's all about my earning. It's all about my family. It's all about my savings. The, uh, their own happiness is their new God. Amen? Are you listening to me? And Jesus says, whenever we see people loving themselves, ito po yung key principle natin. Ito yung key principle. Key, key principle. Whenever we see people loving themselves more than loving others, and the love between others grows cold, these are signs to look for in the end times. Amen? Ito po yung mga bagay na titingnan natin. So, kung ikaw may tanong, ito yung mga bagay na tingnan mo. And I hope you wrote them all. I hope you took notes of them all. Kasi ito po yung bagay na titingnan natin. Siguro yung mga, mga first time uh, 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 listeners natin, yung viewers dyan, maaaring may tanong sa kanilang isip. No po? Maaaring ka may tanong sa iyong puso. Maaaring mong sabihin na, paano nalaman ni Pastor lahat yan? Well, I'm telling you what the Word of God was saying. Ito po yung sinasabi ng Scriptures. Ito po yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa atin through His Word. Alright? So then the six signs, okay? Six na po tayo. Number six na. The six signs that will indicate that Jesus' return is near is that the Antichrist no po, must be revealed. Now, I want you to focus on this. This is very important as we go deeply. No po? Pa, ano, ang sabi ko sa inyo, yung pang number seven ang pinakamabigat sa lahat. Pero before number seven, ito yung number six. Para patunayan natin, no po, patunayan natin na ang Panginoon is talaga bang sa nangyayaring pandemic ngayon, sa nangyayaring nga nangyayari coronavirus ngayon, ito po na ba pastor talaga yung sign? Well, nasabi ko na sa inyo yung lima. Okay? But as I, as I said earlier, yung first five na yon ang pinakamababaw. Ang aabangan natin, especially, is itong number six at number seven para makita mo kung ito na ba talaga ang signs ng pagbabalik ng Panginoon. O ito na ba yung signs? Amen. Hindi po, uh, uh, please, uh, hindi yung, mali yung words ko. Hindi yung pagbabalik ng Panginoon, yung end times, ang pinag-usapan natin dito. Yung last days, okay? Uh, please, correct, uh, I would like to correct what I said. Hindi po yung pagbabalik ng Panginoon. We're talking about end times here, okay? Now, tingnan po natin yung sabi sa Matthew 24, 15. Tingnan niyo po. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, is spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to this. This is very important. Ano, ano pong ibig ko sabihin no po, sa verse na ito? If you don't know anything about the Antichrist, today, today I want you to understand, okay? I want you to understand that, that the Antichrist has many names in the scriptures. Okay? Baka hindi mo alam kung sino yung Antichrist? Baka hindi mo alam kung, kung anong pangalan niya? Sa mismong scriptures po mismo, nakasulat ang kanyang pangalan. And this is one of his name. Abomination of Desolation. Ito po yung isa sa mga pangalan ng Antichrist. At kaya po maraming tao ang nagtatanong at natatakot, thinking that the end is near, ang iniisip ng mga tao bukod sa anong kakainin nila these days, Ano ipapadala nila sa family nila these days? Wala silang sweldo. Ano mangyayari pag bumalik ang Panginoon? But listen to this. Listen to this. What Jesus says, I would not return until the Antichrist is revealed first. Ulitin ko po ulit. Meron po sinasabi si Lord dito. Ipapakita ko sa inyo. I will not return yet until the Antichrist is revealed first. And fall Confirm this. Basahin po natin yung sabi ni Paul. Ito po. Ito po yung sabi ni Paul. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Alright? So, ito po, 
Ito na yung sasagot sa tanong natin. Sa mga advanced mag-isip, pero natatakot naman, bakit hindi po tayo mabuti? In this sense of passage, Jesus said that I am not gonna return until the Antichrist take his stand and become a public evil political figure that is going to rule around the world. Tama? Meron na ba tayo nakikita ganyan? Sa mga naunang tinuro ko, meron increase sa mga nakita natin. But we need to take that word increase and frequency. Tama? Mga may nangyayari ng ganon, pero meron na bang increase talaga at frequency? But in this six reason, di pong six reason na to, this will cement and this will answer the question na meron kayo. Gusto ko maintindihan ninyo lahat na hindi po ito tungkol sa rapture. Ulitin ko ulit. Para po malinaw, na po? Para po malinaw sa lahat. Ang pinag-uusapan natin is hindi po about tungkol sa rapture. Ang sinasabi ko po rito is all about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yung mga signs ng pagbalik ng Panginoon. And notice what Jesus says that the Antichrist is going to do. Tingnan niyo po, sabi niya rito, yung verse na yun mismo, yung, yung hinighlight ko po yun. Ano sabi niya? So that He sits as God in the temple of God, showing Himself that He is God. Now, I want you to notice something here. In order for Jesus to return, ito ha, ulitin ko ulit. In order for Jesus to return, the Antichrist will do something first. Ano yung gagawin niya? That He will sit at the very temple of God. He will desecrate or defile the temple of God. And He will show to all that He is God. Amen? Malinaw po ba yan? Amen po ba? Are you with me? But I'm going to play music natin. Brother, I'm going to back now. Now, listen to this carefully. Listen. Listen to this carefully. This is very important. There is only one problem here. Okay? Yung pinag-uusapan natin, I can see one problem here. And the problem is, the third Jewish temple does not exist yet. Nakasulat po yan sa book of Revelation. And this will lead us to the seventh and final Jesus, final sign of Jesus' return. Ang sabi ko po rito, ito po yung rebuilding of the temple. Ayan. Ayan na po yung final uh, signs natin of, uh, of uh, tayo ba is talagang nabubuhay na sa end times. Tayo ba talagang nabubuhay na sa last days. Now, please understand that everything that we just talked about so far is yung mga birth pains pa lang. Okay? Yung mga binigay ko sa yung first five reasons are or first five signs, eh yung mga birth pains pa lang, yung mga signs pa lang. At ang sabi ko kanina, yung intensity at yung frequency nun, titingnan mo as what the Bible says. Alright? So, yung mga birth pains pa lang yun. But the very first sign, ito po yung very first sign, that Jesus return is going to be the rebuilding of the temple. <laughs> Amen? Kapag nakita mo na na binubuo na yung temple, yun na yun. Wala nang question yun. Pastor, paano mo nasabi yan? Eh, yun ang sulat sa Bible. Yes? This is the reason why we read the Bible. Ito may sabi. So, whenever we start to see that is happening somewhere here in the Middle East, kung bagay nangyayari na, then we know that the clock is ticking. Then we know that the clock is start to ticking. No po? Notice what Jesus says here. Tingnan yung sabi ni Jesus. He's standing in the holy place. And when we say standing in the holy place, that's the temple. Kaya sabi niya, whoever reads, let him understand. At sabi niya, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Jesus says, whenever you see the Antichrist desecrating the very temple of God, at kung ikaw yung buhay pa, o nandito ka pa, kung hindi ka pa nararapture, when it happened, meaning, hindi ka pa kinukuha ni Lord, Jesus says that will the time, that is, that is the time that, will, that the clock will be ticking. Kung buhay ka pa, Dapo, kung buhay ka pa at nakita mong ginagawa na yung temple na yan that is the time for you to think that Jesus is coming very near na talaga and my return is going sabi ni Lord to be very near malapit na yung pagbalik niya kapag nakita mo na yung sign na yan but listen to this this is the main point sa mga oras sa mga panahon na to as I speak right now habang nagsasalita ako sa inyo the very place where the temple is to be rebuilt in Jerusalem, 
as what the scripture was saying, yung mismo lugar na yun, yung mismo piece of land na yun, eh may nakatayo pang building. Hanggang ngayon po, naandyan pa yung building na yan. Yan po is kung tinatawag ng Biblia is Dome of the Rock. Naandyan pa po yan. Yung building na yan, naandyan pa. Yan po yung mosque. Amen? So, until that building and this is destroyed and torn down. Listen. Hanggat yung building na yan, naandyan pa. Or until that building is destroyed and torn down. And the third Jewish temple is erected on the same and exact land. Then the Antichrist will not able to desecrate yet the temple. Tama? Yung pinag-usapan natin sa number 6. Eh, wala pang i-desecrate at wala pang uupuan yung Antichrist. Kasi hanggang ngayon, nakatayo pa yan dyan. Dapat mo nang mabuo yun, yung temple na yun, kung saan ang Antichrist is magahare. Hello, are you listening to me? Naiintindihan niyo po ba yung pinag-usapan natin yun? Which only means, Jesus' return is not yet here. Hindi pa po itong coronavirus na to, hindi pa po pandemic na to, ang signs na ang Panginoon is pabalik na. Hindi pa po. Uulitin ko ulit, hindi pa. So sa mga nag-question sa akin, sa mga nagtanong po sa akin, wag po kayong mag-alala, wag po kayong matakot. Dahil hindi pa po ito yung signs na muli niya pagbabalik. Pero, listen to me, Dahil sa mga pag, pag pinag-usapan natin, dahil sa mga ipinakita ko sa inyo, anytime na andyan na at malapit na siyang bumalik. So you need to watch out. Ang sabi, ang sabi ng Biblia, no one knows when it will be. Tama? No one knows. Only God the Father knows. But, as I'm telling you right now, sa mga pinag-usapan natin, sa seven signs, sa mga nagtanong, sa mga natakot, Sa mga natatakot right now, Pastor, ito ba yung signs ng end times? Well, I can tell you that this is one of the signs. But, as I explain to you right now, hindi pa yan ito. Ngayon, hindi pa. So, we need, we need to see first na itong building na yan na nasa screen is mawasak muna, then itatayo yung third Jewish uh, 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 temple, at kasi doon uupo yung Antichrist. <laughs> doon siya maghahari. Eh, wala pong ganun eh. Ngayon, pag nakita natin na binubuo na yon at ito'y wala na, yung building na yan, tinanggal na dyan, eh, yun na. Tama? Magpipritch ulit ako sa inyo. Tulitin natin ito. I-remind ko kayo. Ewan po ba? Now, the question is here. The question is here. Or is this coronavirus pandemic, pandemic is a sign that we are now in the last days? Ha? Ito na ba yun? Ito na ba yun? Ito, ba na, ito na ba yung tanong? No. Okay, so ang gusto, ang gusto kong sabihin sa inyo right now Kung ikaw yung isa sa mga nagtanong According to what I have preached right now According to what I have said right now What do you think? Huh? What do you think? Is this coronavirus pandemic a sign that we are now in the last days? Isa pa lang yan sa mga sign Pero hindi pa yan Okay? Ito, is, as, as I see, is just a part of test na tayo po mga Christian, kung nawawala ka man, bumalik ka na. Kung hindi ka man nagsishare, mag-share ka na. At kung may kita ninyo, buong mundo, nag-unite in prayer. May kita niyo sa social media, mga tao na sa kanya nagpe-pray. May kita natin mga pastors in the very first time. Yung mga pastors dito sa UAE at sa Pilipinas, no? I don't know the other parts of the world, meron silang mga social media na nilalagay na lahat tayo mag-pray at this time. So, ang buong mundo nagpe-pray right now, calling the, the mercy, the grace of Jesus, no po, knowing that He is God. Wala na pong iba pa. Siya lang ang tatawagan natin. So, the very last days that Jesus return is near, I don't think we can necessarily say that right now with confidence. Hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin niya right now. Because if we look over to our history, there has been many plagues and pestilences and flus. Tama? Kung matatandaan niyo po, we have been experienced dated back to early 1900s. Na po, naalala niyo po ba yung Spanish flus? Na po, yung Spanish flus na yan that kill almost 100 million people around the world. Grabe po yung nangyari noon. So much yon. Matagal na nangyari yon. Meron ding swine flu. Meron ding Ebola. And many others. Now, until we see these things more frequently, 
Pag sinabing frequently, meron ngayon, meron bukas, sa next month, meron na naman, sa isang linggo, meron na naman, sa isang... Yun po yung frequently. Kung baga, tuloy-tuloy, ang dami na nangyayari. No po? Pero as, as we see in the history, ito po ay parang uh, season by season pa lang naman. No po? So yung pagbabalik ni Lord, not this time. Pero I want to warn everyone, He is very near. So this is the right time for us, as a Christian, as a believer, to share His goodness. To share to everyone that He is God. That without Him, we are nothing. That He is the same yesterday and forever. That every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus one day. Amen? That you cannot reach your, the kingdom of heaven if you don't say to anyone that Jesus is God. Amen? Wala pong ibang Diyos kundi siya lang. Amen po ba? For, for the meantime, the po, as we close this, habang may pandemic pa, mga kapatid, habang nandito pa tayo sa ganitong sitwasyon, habang tayo sa walang trabaho, habang naka-lockdown ka sa kanya-kanyang bahay, ano po, sa ating-ating mga bahay, huwag po tayong matakot. Ayan? Huwag po tayong matakot. Because God is not giving us the spirit of fear. No? Huwag po tayong matakot. Magpatuloy lang tayo. And ikaw, kung ikaw man is LRCians, right now, na nakakinig right now, I want to encourage you that this is the best time for you to share the gospel. Ito yung best time for you. This is the best time for you to, to apply that strategy that we have. No po? Yung help, assist, show kindness to other people, and win them to Christ. No po? Win them. Para po, imagine, imagine ninyo po yung pagbabalik natin sa church. Imagine ninyo yung bagay na yun, that everybody will be excited to go to the church, to worship Him in spirit and truth as one body of Christ. Di ba po? So right now, this is the best time to win people. Dalin natin yung mga tao, wag po tayo magpakita ng takot. Tayo mismo kailangan manindigan that this is just a trials of God to us. That this is just a test of your faith and my faith. That this is the best time for us to share the truth. The truth that set us free. Amen? Are you listening po ba? Now, as my last verse, ito po yung sabi sa last verse. Ang sabi po rito, Trust in the Lord and do good. Amen? Are you with me? Habang nagtitiwala ka sa Panginoon, gumawa lang tayo ng maganda these days. Maganda lang. Walang pangit. Then, you will live safely in the land and prosper. Imagine, imagine mo yun, yung may pandemic na, imagine mo yun, wala ng trabaho, imagine mo yun na, wala ka nang makain, pero if you do good, if you do good, and you will trust the Lord, you will live safely in the land and prosper. Hindi ka lang safe, prosper pa. <laughs> Amen? Uh, are you listening to this word? Hindi ka lang ligtas magpa-prosper ka paraw. Amen? And there's nothing difficult to God. There is nothing impossible to Him. Why? Because you will delight in the Lord, take in delight, take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire. Amen? Are you listening? Ano ba yung heart's desire right now? Ano ba yung gusto mong gawin right now? Kung hindi ka na babother sa nangyayari ngayon, Kung patuloy ka nagtitiwala sa Panginoon, patuloy ka nagdudu ng good sa kapwa mo, well, you will prosper. Tawa? You will prosper and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? Are you blessed? The blessed mo ba tayo sa araw na to? I want you to close your eyes with me, please. Close your eyes, everybody. Close your eyes. And uh, bow down your head to our Jesus, to our God and Savior. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the word that you have given us. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you for the answer that you have given us. Especially to those people na nagtatanong Panginoon, na ito bang pandemic na to, na ito bang coronavirus na to, Lord God? Is ito na ba yung sign na malapit ka nang bumalik? O oh, ito na ba yung sign, Lord God, na bukas pabalik ka na o anytime babalik ka na, Lord, as, we, as you have teach us today. Lord God, we believe that these things are happening because you want to teach us something. That all of us, believer of yours, that all of us who are called children of yours, Lord God, 
will do the work, will do the purpose of why, why you have called us. Kung paano nyo kami tinawag, Panginoon, this is the right time for us to declare your goodness sa mga tao. This is the right time for us na isabihin sa mga tao na wala pong ibang Diyos kundi kayo lang. At salamat po, Panginoon. We are so blessed today, Lord God, na binigyan nyo kami ng kasiguraduhan. Na binigyan nyo kami ng, uh, ng uh, isang matatag na paniniwala, Panginoon. Na itong mga nangyayarang ito, Lord God, is just a call for us to do what is good and to continue delight ourselves unto you. Father, we bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we pray that you will continue to cover your people with your precious blood, including our family, including our loved ones, including our houses. We're the place we are staying, Lord God. Let your precious blood protect us and let your provisions be with your people. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Palapan nga po natin ang Panginoon ng Malakas. Okay? And before I close this, before I close this, I just want to remind everyone. You po, maybe uh, you are new in this uh, in this uh, uh, live streaming. We just want you to follow our uh, uh, Facebook account. The po ito pong Facebook account namin, the pong Life Harvest Restoration Church. Para po lahat ng live streaming is makuha niyo every Friday or every Sunday night during our Sunday prayer meeting at uh, nine o'clock UAE time. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, meron din po kami YouTube uh, YouTube uh, loading na po. Punta lang po kayo daw sa NRC Das AUX. Search lang po yun. And like, like all the YouTube's uh, channel and you will see lahat po ng mga preaching natin every week. You can share that to your loved ones. You can share that to the people around you, to your friends and the neighbors and loved ones. So po, don't, para po, during this time na tayo po yung naka-lockdown naka sa loob ng bahay, Meron po tayong pagkakaabalahan. Amen? Meron po tayong panonoorin. Amen po ba? And before I forget, today is Friday. At uh, mahal na araw na po. Ano, ano yung Friday today? Good, Good Friday. Friday. Good Friday. Okay? So, I just want to, to say to everyone na ang Panginoon po, minsan lang namatay at muling nabuhay more than 2,000 years ago. Right now, the scripture says that He is sitting of the right hand throne of God and He is inter interceding for you and me. Hindi po namamatay ang Panginoong Jesus every Good Friday. Isang bes lang po siya namatay at muling nabuhay more than 2,000 years ago. Buhay na buhay po ang Panginoon natin at hindi po muling namatay. At one day po, babalik siya sa judge. Kung siya po dumating dito more than 2,000 years ago sa mundo, as a savior, pagbalik niya one day, we will be judged according to what you believe. So don't believe that Jesus is dead today. Hindi po siya patay at mabubuhay bukas. Hindi po. Matagal na po nangyari yun. More than 2,000 years ago. Kaya nga po tayo naandito to share the goodness of God because He is alive. No po? One day lang siya namatay. Oh sorry, one day siya namatay, tatlong beses, tatlong araw na buhay. At after noon, hindi na muling namatay. I just want to make clear this to everyone. And this is what the scripture says. Amen? Hallelujah. Can you, can you receive this? Come on, everybody. Please uh, raise up your two hands. Let the love of the Father, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the protection, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.